All right, this film study video is going to be a look at Tyler Huntley's play in the wild card loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, we understand that he had the huge turnover on a, a, what we now know to be a misapplication or a, a mis, misfired attempt to leap over uh, the offensive and defensive lines from far, way too far out that was not the design of the play. So I understand that, you know, to start off the analysis, that is the play of the game that really lost the game, or at least flipped the win percentage. If you pay attention to all those win percentage indicators in real time, I don't. But that clearly was a huge momentum shift, gave the Bengals the lead when the Ravens were, you know, at least at minimum going to walk in and, and uh, get a field goal to go up 20 to 17 or possibly go for it on fourth down if the quarterback failed, quarterback sneak failed in typical fashion. Look, let's be honest, Tyler Huntley has not played well since really the Denver game. And even the Denver game, Though he completed 84% of his passes, 27 for 32, and did make the game-winning play to Kenyon Drake on the left side, I think a third down, leading to the touchdown on the next play, um, rushing touchdown to win the game. He had 10, 10 carries for 40 yards in that game, so he had an impact. Over 200 yards of total offense since that time had not played well. 8 of 12 in Pittsburgh before getting injured, uh, and we know Anthony Brown came in in the third quarter, but only 88 yards passing. Lost in Cleveland the next week. A lot of talk about his shoulder, um, his you know his throwing ability, his throwing strength down the field. To me, this game against the Bengals looked different in a lot of ways in terms of throwing the ball downfield, in terms of the way the ball came out. Your opinion may be different, but I feel like he played a lot better. Only 58% completion percentage, 17 of 29. 226, of course, that includes the 41-yarder. For a touchdown to Demarcus Robinson, which I'll show you in this video in a moment, also includes I think a 35-yarder to Mark Andrews and one-on-one coverage against Jesse Bates up the right sideline. I thought he played with more force, despite the two turnovers, which I will show you both of them in this film study video. I think he made money on Sunday for real, not starter caliber money in the NFL, but I think Tyler Huntley in playoff in a playoff situation against a defense that's regarded by most people as, you know, pretty high in the NFL, you know, top 10, top eight, top seven, whatever you want to rate. And I'm not going to throw my personal opinions in there, which would, which would push the Bengals up higher. But I think Tyler Huntley made money for himself uh, this week, 226 yards passing against the Bengals, two touchdowns, one interception, nine rushes for 54 yards, two big turnovers, as a backup quarterback, I thought he went in there and acquitted himself well, uh, gave the Ravens a chance to win the football game. Of course, the, the Bengals defense is missing a woozy who is a hell of a corner and I think would set their corners up better in terms of coverage. And just as a shout out, you know, I will try to do a preview this week for the Bengals-Bills game. Uh, after watching the film today and tonight, I'm concerned about the Bengals defense in the past against the Bills, to be honest with you. But let's get to the film. I won't have any on-screen information. This is the inter interception on the Ravens' first possession. Ravens are once again running this wheel concept that they've ran against the Bengals multiple times. One of the things the Bengals do that I really like, and, and this ball is thrown too far in this direction. There is it possible to fit this ball into Andrews? Yeah, it is. But this is still a great play by, I think, uh, Gaither Davis, I believe. Ravens are running the wheel with Hill out of the backfield. Robinson is getting vertical, and, and you know, if there's more time, Huntley could potentially push this ball down the field to Robinson. That's one of the things that people have talked about with Huntley is getting rid of the ball so quick. Meanwhile, backside, you got Von Bell blitzing. He's, he's responsible for Ricard Mann, to be honest with you. But on the backside, they're letting CTB just handle Oliver one-on-one. -on -one. Ends up being a great play by Gaither Davis. I love how the Bengals do this for real. They've got three inside linebackers on the field, and they're playing what is essentially the flats with one of the inside linebackers to the boundary. If this was their cover three, you would say flats, hook to curl, hook to curl, curl flat. But it looks to me like Von Bell is singled up on Ricard, recognizes the pass pro, and then blitzes. Great play by Gaither Davis. Poor throw by Tyler Huntley to start things off, obviously. I would say probably two feet too far to the right. Now on screen for us here, it's going to be to the left. As Andrews makes this cut against Logan Wilson, I think the ball's thrown a little far out there, but Gaither Davis just makes a hell of a play. 
Very savvy, very aware. He understood where the read side was. All right, second drive, going to be a slant to Watkins on the backside. Bengals are bringing Pratt off the edge. You're going to see him walk up here, 57, and they're trying to bring pressure off that side. Quick backside. I thought this was there. Ball's thrown right in time, right in stride for Watkins to go, go get. I thought this was there in terms of the backside slant. Same play, all 22 angle, by the way. In terms of the backside slant, to Watkins or Robinson. I think we hit it to Robinson twice, but one of them didn't count statistically because of the penalty on CTB. This is kind of like your classic Ravens um, concept to attack over the top of a corner. Now, it's it's not a, a stop route where you would normally get Andrews running this so we could attack here. It's a slant giving Huntley an initial read, and he takes it, but you also have Andrews not saying that he's open, but Andrews, you know, possibly running this route. Sometimes he'll sit it down, depending on the coverage. Sometimes he'll he'll lube it up into the middle of the field. In this case, Huntley takes it quick to Watkins. Timing pattern, boom. I thought his arm looked better Sunday. You guys let me know uh, what you think. <clears throat> Second possession again. Snag, smash. Strong throw, I think. When I say snag, smash, I mean you've got Robinson here on the stop. Oliver, they like Oliver on this corner route. I, I like Josh Oliver. I, I'm, I'm not sure how often we've hit this. Memory, if memory serves maybe twice this year, I feel like we'd be better off with an Isaiah Likely there or or even a Charlie Kolar, or someone who can get off a little quicker, running back out into the flats. So Huntley has two, potentially three reads. He gives a, You can see he gives a quick look. At Gus Edwards, that's fake. He's not. There's nothing. He's not going to throw that out there and he, immediately. That's just pulling the flat defender, which in this case is Von Bell. And now he's isolated. You know, two on two. The inside linebacker doesn't have enough width to defend this route. Robinson sits it down, throws it outside of Pratt. This time, I'm not sure. I'll give you the end zone angle. Big hit by CTB. He's a phys physical guy uh, coming downhill. I'm going to run this back one more time because I don't think I show you the end zone angle. As he's releasing the ball, linebacker's breaking. He's got to put this you know, outside of the linebacker's window as the linebacker's closing. I think it's a very accurate, strong throw to Demarcus Robinson, who showed his skills one week after having a pretty terrible game in Cincinnati. Fourth and one, second possession. Option kick right. So you see the fake to Gus, and then follows it right, right side, gets the first down. Interesting. I mean, how many quarterbacks in the NFL? There's going to be more. But how many quarterbacks in the NFL on, on consecutive plays are asked to do what some of our quarterbacks are asked to do? Huntley's not as athletic as Lamar. Like, come on, no, nobody is. You know, really, nobody is. No quarterback is in the history of the NFL. You know, Sands, Michael Vick, you know, and a couple of other guys, maybe. But Huntley's asked to do some of the same things. Occasionally, in this on the fourth down plays, I should say, he's asked to get the first down, and he does so. I think he made money on Sunday night. How much? I'm not sure. All right, third and goal. Uh, I like this play. I really like this play. This, to me, is a one-read play. There is really no other option here. You can see how quickly Huntley's getting rid of the football. It is, if you ask me, supposed to be a pin by Andrews, which is successful, and then a pin by Likely, which to me looks unsuccessful. But he, he being Likely, appears unsure of which linebacker to pin. Right now, to me, it looks like he's looking at Logan Wilson, thinking about pinning him, and the guy that needs to be pinned is this extra linebacker. But you can't tell as a player sometimes, you know, there's an extra linebacker on the field here, just so you know. The Bengals have four inside linebackers on the field, one safety, and then six defensive linemen. I'll go back to the beginning so you can see it. So I'm kind of I'm kind of taking up for Isaiah Likely. When they draw up this play, they tell him to pin the front side inside linebacker. Well, according to where the inside linebackers normally line up, this is the front side inside linebacker for a play to Dobbins that's going this way. I really like the design of this because the pin on Sam Hubbard by Andrews and what should be a pin – of likely on, I think that's Gaither Davis, but again, likely is reading this as the front side inside backer, I believe. What it does is it isolates Dobbins on this linebacker here. Here's what I like about Huntley's decision here. He just gets rid of it. He just says, I'm going to give JK a chance to make a play. There's really something to be said for that, if you ask me, 
in terms of giving the ball to your playmakers, letting them make a play. Look how smooth J.K. is catching the football and just turning up field. I think it's a nice play. This is one of the few times when I will say Greg Roman and the offensive staff designed a play for a specific situation. I think what they're trying to do is force this front side inside linebacker to run with Dobbins, and we were not anticipating that there would be a third, and then off screen over here to the right is 51, whose name I forget. He's a pretty good player too, not as good as Pratt or Wilson. We were not anticipating that they would have a four inside linebacker look you know, on this third and goal. Great play by Dobbins. I like the decision by Huntley. All right, third drive, first and 10. This is a high snap. I didn't think this was as high live as it as it is, but looking at it now, that's a high snap. Looks like a run play to me that turns into a pass play. 19-yard gain to Oliver. Spectacular by Huntley. He's our backup quarterback. Hopefully will be our backup quarterback for a while. I want for him to get opportunities where he can make more money, for real, because I like his attitude. I like how he takes blame or responsibility for the things that he messed up. But look, this snap is high. I mean, this is really high. If you ask me, you know, would Huntley be able to catch this ball, you know, six times out of 10, seven times out of 10, something like that, you know, maybe five out of 10? Sure. Yeah, he could. But this this is on Linderbaum. This is way too high, if you ask me. And then we get a fortunate bounce. I think you've got run blocking here. It looks to me like Gus is coming downhill, and we should be uh, reading this D end. That's my guess. As it is, we can't because it's a high snap. I don't see anyone running routes. I see people blocking. And then Josh Oliver with the awareness to put his hands up. Only guy who's close to being downfield is maybe, I think that's Zeitler. And you'll see the all 22 in a minute. Beautiful play by Huntley. One of the situations where I think the Bengals' mentality of trying to strip the football comes back to haunt them. That you know could have been four or five or six yards less on the game. This is Josh Oliver, by the way. Same play, all 22 angle. And instead, they're trying to strip the football. Fortunate bounce for us. Sam Hubbard unable to get there. Beautiful play by Likely. You saw the end zone angle, so you saw that you know, there was a window, clearly he fitted through there, but it wasn't an, an eight or nine or ten yard window. There's players in between him throwing the football and Oliver. There's players along the sideline. There's players over the top. So he's got to fit it, you know, inside of a horizontal window this way. And then he's also got to fit it at the correct correct depth. Only guy who I think is is close there is um Zeitler, but again, it's supposed to be a running play. If you ask me, these are some of the things, the reasons why I think Tyler Huntley played quite well. Um, you may disagree. Obviously, the fumble return for a touchdown pretty much negates everything he did. All right, first and goal, the throwback screen. I thought he played this well. I thought that Huntley sold this well. What we're trying to make it look like is the sprint out to the right. Credit to the Ravens' offensive staff here, to be honest with you. We've run sprint out at this point. We've run sprint out to the right, I think, twice already in the game. So we're running it again and then coming back with the throwback screen. You've clearly got two missed blocks here, Stanley and Powers. Linderbaum, to me, I think that's Linderbaum. Linderbaum, to me, looks like he's gonna his job, his responsibility is to seal inside so, so he doesn't really miss a block, but you can see his back is within three yards of Jesse Bates. Missed opportunity, still don't like the play call in terms of um, – the throwback to Andrews. If I'm going to throw the ball to Mark Andrews down here on first and goal from the three, I want a typical pass concept whereby he's doing something he does in practice every day, running a fade, running a slant, running a post-up route, whatever the hell it is. Third and eight on the fourth possession. I think we got a field goal on that last one. I showed you to take a 10-9 lead. I think that was our our possession to end the second quarter, but I might be wrong. This is our possession to start the third quarter. Huge play by Logan Wilson. Huntley scrambles out of there. A lot of space here. He's just unable to beat Logan Wilson to the sideline and turn it up. Almost gets there. Great play by Logan Wilson, who I thought made three or four fantastic plays in this game. Huntley believes, though. Like, he believes he's going to get it here. Yet, you know, maybe you got a one-on-one -on -one that you could take up here. It doesn't appear that we have the confidence in Sammy Watkins um, at the quarterback position that I thought 
week should or could based upon the two matchups he had last week with CTB up the right sideline. We don't take it. We've also got an edge rusher, you know, who won along the left side, so kind of breaks Huntley off the progression. He tries to turn it into a run. I think he believes. I think he believes he can make plays. And he believes he can win for this team. Obviously, we didn't get it done. All right, fifth possession. It's a first and 10. This is a full flow, one-man screen, basically, if you ask me. So you've got two little space routes, and then the running backs, Ricard and Dobbins, going out into the flat. So here's what I mean. Oliver just going to sit it down. I think this is Andrews going to sit it down. And then Ricard and Dobbins out into the flat. So we're attacking four into the boundary, and it works because we've got Ricard as a lead blocker once Dobbins catches the football. Look how smooth Dobbins is catching this thing and turning up field. Credit to Huntley. The same stunt has given us problems. With the end, they're blitzing a linebacker. Maybe that's Mike Hilton off the edge. This D-tackle kind of getting upfield, and then the end is looping around, and he'll end up going in between Linderbaum and Zeitler. This is the third or fourth time I've seen them run this stunt in the past two weeks against the Ravens. So the Bengals, in my opinion, identified something in our pass pro that was a weakness, and they capitalized on it. Great job by Huntley, if you ask me, to get that throw off while dealing with pressure from, I think, Sample. Tailback screen to Gus Edwards. This was shocking. I don't remember us running screens to Gus, but damn, this looked good. And I thought it's two trips. You got a little play action. Huntley seems to sell it well and then get rid of the ball quick. He's not hanging around and waiting for it to develop. It's kind of similar in some ways to the touchdown pass to, to J.K. What I mean is he understands where the ball is going to go, and he's going to get it out there. Mentality-wise, I kind of like that. Of course, we know there's times on progression plays where it's not predetermined who should get the ball. This is going to be the touchdown to Demarcus Robinson. We know on progression plays where he doesn't know who's going to get the ball that there's times where that comes back to haunt us. This is one of those situations I don't know why the Ravens didn't do this against the Bengals more often, and I don't know why the, the Ravens didn't do this against other teams more often. This is one of those things, and you know, I've had some people I respect a lot talk to me about looking in the backfield. There's time to do it and a time not to. Watch the timing of when Huntley pump fakes and when Apple goes for the sluggo. You can talk about the route if you want to. This is Apple trying to see the quarterback and see the sluggo and see the slant. These guys go, multiple NFL corners go for this. I mean, that's beat by seven yards. That ball is underthrown because he realizes how open he is. He's trying not to overthrow him. My point in talking about Looking into the backfield is this doesn't bode well, if you ask me, for the Bengals coverage-wise against the Bills. I'll be real with you. I'm a, I'm a Bengals defensive guy. I appreciate their defense. I like what they do. But these situations, this little lack of discipline, if you ask me, uh, this will happen three times against the Bills if they allow their corners to play those coverages and look in the backfield like that. You also have a one-on-one -on -one up top to Watkins that I think is available. I think the Bills – coaching staff right now is looking at some of these situations from the last two weeks and saying uh, we can attack these guys downfield and if you think I'm being hyperbolic here let me read you a quick stat in two games the last two games with a second string quarterback and third string quarterback the Ravens have 17 passes of 11 yards or more against this Bengals defense 17 in two games now I don't know you know how you consider that to me that sounds like Eight quarters, that sounds like two per quarter. Two play, two pass plays per quarter of 11 yards per or more. Now, a lot of them are like this one, or, or at least six or eight, let's put it that way, are like this one. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. Bates, who played an amazing game, I thought, against Andrews. I really like the design of this, and I think, again, this is designed to go to Andrews. That's the reason why he's off the line. There's a name for this. Um, I won't say it in this video where the inside tight end is off the line, and the outside tight end is on the line, thereby making them eligible. Additionally, Ricard is off the line behind Andrews. This is designed to just clear the release for Andrews, so no D end is getting hands on him. Getting him on an outside release, Bates is there trying to be physical, clear out route here just to remove the corner from the situation. Man, credit Huntley. It's an extremely well-thrown ball. Great catch by Andrews. Don't get me wrong. 
Huntley looks confident here. He looks most confident when he knows where the ball is going. Well, that makes sense, right? When you know the guy's going to be open or you know there's a pretty good chance. End zone angle right here. Back to my point about the Bengals' pass defense. Does it mean it's not good? No. They've got a, they've got a hell of a pass defense. They're missing a woozy, which is a problem. The Ravens also kept Mike Hilton off the field a lot in Sunday's game, the wildcard game, because of our personnel groupings, and I think that impacts their pass defense. 17 plays, pass plays, of 11 yards or more in two games by Tyler Huntley and Anthony Brown. I think that's significant. All right, seventh drive, QB. This is the very next play. I know I belabored the point for a while talking about the Bengals' pass defense, but let's look at the last two plays again in succession. 25-yard gain. I mistakenly said this was 35. 25-yard gain on third and one to Mark Andrews, one-on-one against Jesse Bates. Huntley throws the football. Looks like he takes a shot. Very next play, after taking a shot, we go QB counter read. And the cool thing about this is we're running this away from Ricard. Ricard is going that way. Now, if you were just going to read this guy right here, if that is what's being read, that should be a give. But you've got an inside linebacker flowing, so a gap exchange between Pratt and Hubbard. A safety who's also available there. It looks like it would be a two-on-two -two if you gave it, meaning a lead blocker, Ricard, for Pratt, and then a safety who's coming down. You also got Logan Wilson inside out. You can kind of not really see him, to be honest with you. So it could be a situation where Huntley's reading Pratt, to be honest with you. We don't know. We can sit and, and you know offer conjecture or what should be read, quote-unquote. This looks like to me it could be uh, a designed play to keep it to our left, away from Ricard. And if we get a little bit half second more block from Isaiah Likely, it's over. 35. This is what I thought was a 35-yard gain. This is what was a 35-yard gain. 35-yard gain, again, you can see Pratt, Bell, and, and again, I think it's Logan Wilson kind of hedging his this side. Keeps it, goes to Oliver's side. Why did it take so long for the Ravens to run some of the stuff away from Ricard? Amazing to me. Another stat about uh, the Ravens' offense against the Bengals the last two weeks. This is the ill-fated fumble return. I'll fast-forward this in a minute, so if you're a Ravens fan, you'll have to watch it. Look, the Ravens have 43 first downs in the last eight quarters against the Bengals' defense. Bengals' defense is legit. They're going to show up to Buffalo to compete. You know, I believe in them. I talk about it ad nauseum when I do these breakdowns. But that's a lot of first downs. Ravens averaged 5.1 yards per play in the Week 18 loss, 27-16. And then they averaged 5.5 yards per play in the wild card loss this past week. This is a slant to Demarcus Robinson. Clean, quick, looking the linebacker off, if you ask me. I think CTB was called for a penalty here. Not really looking here as much as I thought he was originally. Comes back, knows where he's going with the football. When he knew where he was going with the football, to me, he looked like a different level of confidence. Again, the highest yards passing he's had this year in the, I think, six games he's played. I said it twice already. I'll say it one more time. I think he made a lot of money Sunday. I think he prolonged his career. Not saying that he was in danger of you know being cut, being released. I think that games like this in the playoffs, NFL front office guys, remember when you can do this. Who's the comparison for him? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I don't like to put people in boxes, but to me, people in front offices are going to say, well, there's a guy here who can execute multiple concepts, even back to back. That's the key thing for me is the uh, you know, the big pass to Andrews and then very next play, the QB counter read to the left. You'd like to see him score there for real. Lamar would obviously score. Credit to Huntley, man. I thought he played well. This is the failed fourth down at the end of the game, I believe. Just to try to get this thing off, I think, is a big deal. Give us an opportunity to catch it. Of course, we don't take advantage of it. Tipped off Prochet's fingertips. You know, a difficult loss for all of us, but trying to draw a positive in Tyler Huntley's play. And I'm doing that, not intentionally, but because I see it. You know, I saw a lot of positives. Saw him play better than I anticipated. 17 of 29 isn't great. 226 isn't great You know, when you have a 41-yard touchdown to um, 
to Demarcus Robinson, but a lot of short plays, a lot of confidence throwing the ball when he knows the read. I feel like three or four, maybe even five designed pass plays or situations where he knows where he's going with the football, he looks better. So give our coaches credit on that. I still think our play calls inside the five were terrible. Um, but that's a diff- That's a separate issue, maybe a separate video later in the week. You guys let me know. I'm sure that at this point, as the video premieres, you've offered your opinion. Let me know if you agree. I think Tyler Huntley played well, 80 to 85% of the game, maybe even more. And then there was you know, some situations five or six times where he did not, but made plays that most backup quarterbacks, I feel like, are not going to make. That two-play sequence, the third and one completion to Andrews against Jesse Bates and man, then the QB counter read on the very next play after he took a shot from Trey Hendrickson, by the way. The high snap by Linderbaum that Huntley recovers and hits Oliver for a 19-yard gain. Some of the slants that he threw to Watkins and Robinson. I really like him. Yeah, you wish that we didn't get a turnover on the first possession. And clearly, you wish that, you know, we're not extending the ball on a leap that's not supposed to be a leap. So there's a, a breakdown there in discipline by Huntley, and hopefully he, he fixes it and, you know, is a guy who can stay in the league 8, 10, 12 years and, and give teams a little bit of security that they have someone who can come in and execute some concepts if the starter is out like Lamar was last week. Appreciate you guys' time. You guys let me know what you think of the video, what you think of my thoughts. If you think other Ravens fans would appreciate this video, uh, please consider sharing a link on social media to help the video get more reach.